we've taken a look at probably more mice than anything this year on the channel. I think I have like a ton of mice reviews. That's probably the thing that I reviewed the most this year. Am I gonna do the same idea with keyboards this year? Probably not, but I, I may do a wild card and do like top keyboard switches or something like that, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure, we'll think about it. Maybe I'll do a top five for that. But today we're gonna be doing a top 10 video on my favorite mice this year we have them broken up into specific categories as well and then we got a couple of uh honorable mentions or more interesting categories but um other than that let's go ahead and get right into the list all right so the first category that we're going to go through is going to be my personal favorite mice of the year and these two slash three mice are all extremely similar largely because of the shape and we're gonna start off with my favorite being the Rocat Burst Pro. This one is a really big surprise to me this year. I didn't expect Rocat to uh, come out so strong with their first lightweight, or I should say incredibly lightweight option. And I think the build quality on this one is pretty solid. My favorite thing about this one is just obviously the shape, of course, because I was a big fan of the Endgame Gear X and one shape. I just really like how this feels in the hand. The biggest improvement for me that made me swap from the XM1 to the Burst Pro is the fact that in the back you have just a bit more height and it's more comfortable to grab in the palm. Because uh, more or less, I play claw grip. The part at the back really feels out the back of your hand and it just makes it more comfortable to use for longer periods of time. Otherwise, I like the size. You got a solid amount of texture here that gives you a nice amount of grip. And then you also have some pretty nice tactile side buttons as well. Now, the thing about this mouse that does turn some people off is the switches. They're Titan optical switches. And to me, they don't necessarily have the best sound. They feel pretty decent. But if you're really big on how you feel about mouse clicks, maybe this one might not work out for you. But otherwise, decent clicks in my opinion solid build quality side buttons feel nice and they're nicely sized this uh <clears throat> the scroll wheel is pretty good as well the stock paracord is really good the only reason why i switched it out is because i was curious to try one of these lethal gaming gear paracords they're new ones that are a little bit more flexible than they have been in the past and this one is the starry night edition i just think it looks so good with the burst pro and then one thing i was really impressed with as well from Rocat. These PTFV feet are some of the best that I have tried on a mouse to date. These are just as good as Tiger Arc 2s and they even give you an extra set in the box. Next, moving on to my number two favorite mouse of the year. This one actually lived on my desk for most of the year since I got it, I wanna say in late January. This is the Endgame Gear XM1 and also the XM1 RGB. They did just release the new XM1R, which is supposed to be an improved version of the XM1 with better switches, better paracord, new skate design. It's gonna be a little bit more similar to the skates on the XM1 RGB. But let's talk about the uh, original XM1 because this is the one that I use the most and the one that I still personally recommend. So again, very similar shape to the Rocat Burst Pro and the side buttons are also nice and big. This one, there's no DPI button at the top, but I don't really swap DPI at all, so I don't really mind it. You can just control it in the software. In Game Gear, they're supposed to have updated the software too to perform a little bit better. The scroll wheel on this one, nice and tactile, good feedback. The clicks on the original XM1, I never had a problem with. I always thought that they were very good, nice and crispy and short throw, but I will say that the clicks on the XM1 RGB with those improved kale reds these just sound and feel so much better and in the xm1r supposedly the clicks are supposed to be better than both of these so i can't wait to get my hands on that one and test it out for myself but if you need rgb that's what the xm1 rgb is for and you actually have an improved skate design as well the stock skates on the xm1 are fantastic the only reason why i swapped out the feet on my xm1 is because i want to try out one of paracord miles's new 
paracords. I will have both lethal gaming gear and paracord mouse linked in the description below because throughout this video you'll see that I swap paracords on a lot of my mice and they've pretty much come from those two places either lethal gaming gear or paracord mouse. Both are getting their own separate videos very soon as well so if you're in the market for modding your mouse stay tuned to the channel that is going to be coming up very soon. But on the XM1R again and Game Gear Listen and they made compatibility for both sizes of mouse feet so you get the original size and the bigger two-piece design as well so if you do want to swap the pair cord on the XM1 purely for aesthetic reasons you will be able to without having to worry about buying more feet. But what I will say is that in-game gear set the benchmark when it comes to the quality of the paracord this year and pretty much every other mouse is aspiring to be just like this one because this paracord is honestly one of the best to come out this year like even when you get really really close to it it's still incredibly flexible and there really is no need to swap it out unless like I said aesthetic reasons Next, we have the top two wireless mice. Now, before we get any further in this video, I don't have my G Pro Wireless X Super Light, G Pro Wireless Super Light. I don't have it yet. Okay, I ordered one. It hasn't shipped yet. I'm wondering why, because I ordered on the first day, and like right after all the videos dropped and the pre-orders went live, I'm wondering where it is. I would like to include it in this list if I like it. I'm pretty sure that I will, but I just question the scroll wheel because I didn't like the scroll on the previous G Pro wireless so granted that they improved that the weight is good the mice speed are good and the clicks are good I probably would include it in this list but like I said I just don't have it yet so I can't give you my opinion on it just yet because I don't have it in hand otherwise my top two wireless mice for this year that I've actually used and have are the Model O Wireless and the Razer Viper Ultimate so let's go ahead and start off with the Model O Wireless first Model O Wireless 80 bucks USB type C and uh, yeah just solid build quality this is hands down the best built mouse that glorious has ever made and personally I don't really like squeeze my mice or anything crazy like that like I don't, I don't do that on a regular basis purely did it just for the video but if you care about like the structural integrity of your mouse and you know hopefully you don't crush your mice in your hand this will be a solid contender from glorious the performance is very good. The battery life is incredible. I've been using it on and off for the past like two weeks and I can't remember when the last time I charged it was. I leave the brightness on 60% uh, for the RGB and I've probably put a good 15 hours on it and I gotta check the battery life, but I'm not overly concerned because the scroll will change its color like when it's low on battery. So I'm not overly concerned because I haven't gotten that warning yet, but battery life is incredible. The shape is incredibly safe. So it makes it easy for me to recommend this mouse to anyone. And it's a little bit bigger than the Viper Ultimate as well. So if you like the Viper Ultimate, you're considering it and you're okay with having holes in your mouse and you want something that's slightly bigger, but maybe not as big as the G Pro Wireless, then maybe I would go for the Model O Wireless. Next, we have the Viper Ultimate. The Viper Ultimate is one of my favorite mice that came out at the end of last year, and I wouldn't include it personally, but they did receive a small update this year where they updated the switches. I can't even remember if this one has the new switches or not, but the switches that I have, they feel just fine. I don't have any problems with them, no double clicking issues, nothing weird like that. The uh, mouse feet, I actually swapped out to Tiger R2s because the Razer feet, they're okay, but the Tiger Arc feet are just a lot slipperier and I like them quite a bit more. 
but honestly this one same thing i like the fact that the razor logo at the bottom is a little bit hidden as well and you can't quite see it unless you have the rgb on most of the time i just kept it off because it looks clean and not to mention that the performance from the sensor the performance from the mouse clicks just everything is fantastic about this mouse and the charging dot that you get is absolutely the best now the viper ultimate if it's still 150 dollars at the time that you're looking at it like i know the white one is and i think the cyberpunk one is like 170 dollars or something like that i don't know then you know you really got to consider the g pro x and uh see if you know that one might be a better fit for you but recently i've been seeing the viper ultimate on sale for as low as a hundred dollars including the charging dot but typically it's about 120 dollars which i think is still pretty fair so if you're looking for a mouse and you don't mind it being about five grams heavier than the Model Low Wireless and having that really cool RGB charging dock, I would heavily consider getting the Viper Ultimate. The next category is going to be the best small mice. So my top two small mice for this year are going to be the G Wolves Hottie S and then the Extra Fi M42. Uh, my favorite between the two is going to be the G Wolves Hottie S. Reason being, it's got a very similar shape to like the XM1 and the Burst Pro, but obviously just a little bit smaller if you need a smaller mouse. So that's what I like about it quite a bit. This is probably the only mouse that actually came with side grips that I actually used and liked. The side grips that I used on the Ultralight 2, I honestly did not like them that much, but the side grips from the Hottie S are actually really nice and incredibly grippy and they don't make your hands sweat or feel clammy or weird. So I like that quite a bit that G Wolves threw those in the box this mouse is pretty much perfect there's not really anything that you really need to swap on it like the mouse clicks are incredibly decent has removable micro usb in case you want to swap the paracord i do wish that it was usb type c that would be nice but you know at, at least it's removable i give it that and it's pretty expensive at you know around 80 to 90 dollars plus shipping typically but if you're looking for the absolute best small mouse that's comfortable and has the best clicks solid feeling side buttons a decent scroll wheel as well and good mouse feed that you don't have to worry about changing out i mean the hottie s is just a really really good option and one of the best offerings from g wolves in the past two years this micro usb paracord was from a paracord mouse as well i don't know why i decided to go with the uh the green but i don't know it's just different it's mix match and it's incredibly flexible as well like really impressed with the quality of the paracord vendors and if you're looking for something that's just a little bit more flexible than the cable that g wolves gives you like i said i'll have paracord mouse and lethal gaming gear linked in the description below and you can go ahead and cop one for yourself Next on the list is the Extrafy M42. And I have to give it to them because this mouse was just a massive entry this year for me personally, because think about it. I have to recommend mice to people like all the time. I get, I don't know, probably 10 questions. Uh, I don't know, that might be putting it lightly. I, that's for like one social media platform. I don't know, I get a lot of requests every single day. Like, yo, what mouse should I pick? Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, well, do you like big mice or small mice? How heavy a mouse do you want? blah 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 extra fi m42 makes it really easy to recommend a small mouse reason being you can swap out the back covers they give you two one is a bit more flat so this one's more akin to maybe like a model o minus wireless no not wireless it's not out yet a model o minus and ultralight 2 blah 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 is just long and short so if you want something that is going to be very similar to a model o or something like that but just smaller this could be a really good option for you but let's say that you don't quite know what mouse shape that you want well 
you can swap it out and you can go back to the larger hump that makes this mouse a bit more similar to the Hottie S that we just talked about. A little bit of a smaller version of the Rocat Burst Pro and end Game Gear XM1 is just extremely versatile. Not to mention that the build quality on this one is just absolutely solid. Great size side buttons as well. Really good and tactile feel. The mouse clicks between the one and two are very good. The scroll wheel is incredible. This has one of the best scroll wheels on this list. In my opinion, I think the scroll wheel is very good. And then you also have some pretty decent PTFE feet. They're not necessarily the greatest, but it's probably one thing that I would recommend upgrading. I believe they do give you an extra set in the box, but get some Tiger Arc 1s or Arc 2s. And uh, the biggest drawback about this mouse is gonna be the paracord. Quite frankly, it's not that great. It's actually not flexible at all. It's very bad, to be honest. Like, it's, it's pretty bad. So, when you're upgrading your mouse feet, you're also gonna wanna upgrade that paracord as well. So, again, Legal Gaming Gear, paracord mouse in the description below. Next category we're moving on to is going to be the Ergo Mice. So our top two Ergo Mice picks are going to be the Mountain Makalu 67, also now available in white. He shouts them for sending this out, and the Razer Death Adder V2 and V2 Mini. Starting off with the Mountain Makalu 67, this one has a very good paracord, incredible clicks, absolutely solid build quality. This one is built like a freaking tank. And really the only drawbacks that I have for this mouse is gonna be that I do wish that these mouse skates were just a little bit bigger. I think that that would probably improve the glide just a bit, but maybe I should just swap them out with some better mouse feet and see if that makes a difference to the performance, but they're not bad. I will give them like a six out of 10. You know, that's probably twice as good as like regular uh, Teflon mouse feet. These PTFE, they're decent, but they're about the same quality as the Glorious mice feet, but maybe slightly louder, but it's not the end of the world. Like I said, it's something that we can swap out. Great mouse one and two, great scroll wheel, absolutely fantastic sized side buttons as well with good tactile feedback. And the software is absolutely mint. Mountain software is pretty good. I like it quite a bit and it makes using this mouse and changing the options really, really easy. These little four dots right here are even the uh, DPI indicator to let you know what DPI that you're playing on as well. And overall, this is just a really well-rounded package. And the unboxing experience getting this mouse as well is also pretty good. And just $60, which most of these mice are, but at the $60 price point, this is the Ergo mouse that I would recommend. And even if it was more at like 70 or 80 bucks, I would still recommend it because the shape I find is just incredibly comfortable, fills out your entire hand. The hump in the back is like perfectly sized so that when you grab the mouse, it absolutely perfectly fills out your entire hand. And that is the whole idea of an Ergo mouse. This is exactly what you want. And it's a big mouse, but it doesn't feel big and bulbous in the hand, like per se the Glorious Model D. That one, the full size Model D, feels big in the hand and it doesn't feel like the size is appropriate especially in this region i do want to see a smaller version of this mouse at some point and basically um that's pretty much it otherwise it's a pretty perfect mouse i want to see the mouse skates improved and i want to see a smaller version well the only two pieces of criticism i could give for the Macau 67. Next on the list is the Death Adder V2 and V2 Mini here. I have the Death Adder V2 Mini. I like this one just a little bit more. This one I like because it's a unique shape as most as most Ergo mice really don't have this flare at the front as just gives you a little bit of support for your ring finger here. I think that's just a very nice touch that Razer has always had in their Death Adder line and it's nice that they were able to finally bring that down to a smaller size 
this year. So that was a very nice addition having this come to the Death Adder V2 Mini. Now with the Death Adder V2 in general, they added a higher quality paracord. They added those optical mouse clicks from the original Razer Viper. The side buttons of course on the Death Adder series has always been very good. I do like that on the Mini, you get you know this matte plastic all the way around instead of those rubberized grips like you get on the v2 and the older death adder so i like that because that definitely cuts down on sweat but with the regular death adder v2 they also brought down the weight to under 90 grams which is something that was definitely tangible compared to old death adders and i wish that they could cut it down even more but that's where the mini comes in and this one is weighing in at about i think 60 or 70 grams feels pretty good and balanced in the hand and then this paracord again this one is from paracord mouse this one is looking incredibly solid and super nice in this purple color as well i like it quite a bit but one thing i will say about the death adder v2 mini is that i think this one is a little bit more on the expensive side because this one i believe is about 50 ish dollars um, that I found typically I haven't really seen a lot of these in circulation typically I find either sold out or marked up which is really weird so if you can find this mouse for under 50 bucks I definitely say give it a go if you're looking for a small ergo mouse I would say that this is definitely the one to get Next up, we've got two mice that I would consider to be like the easiest, safe recommendations. They're just all around good mice that have a safe shape that a lot of people could use very easily. Before getting really specific and going into other mice categories where you're looking for like an extremely specific shape and size. So for this category, my number two mice are gonna be the HyperX Pulsefire Haste as well as the Ducky Feather. Starting off with the Pulsefire Haste, this mouse is built incredibly solid as well. I kind of wish that they included, you know, bigger mouse feet instead of, you know, like these four smaller ones, but I can't really complain about the glide because the glide is relatively smooth so I, I don't really you know feel like that's a valid complaint but they do include extra mouse feet as well as mouse grips in the box if you are interested in experimenting with those personally i don't really use a lot of mice other than the hottie s with mouse grips but at least if you want to try it, you don't have to spend any extra money other than buying the mouse to give it a go but the hyper x pulse fire haste i feel like this is an improved version of uh, not necessarily version but this is an improved option to the original glorious model o if somebody asked me if they were interested in the glorious model o and they didn't necessarily have to get the white colorway i would definitely say get the hyperx pulsefire haste instead because overall this is just a better mouse the build quality is better the mouse clicks they're ttc golds and i think that they sound pretty decent the tactile feedback is very good but i'm not necessarily the biggest fan of how they sound it's it's okay it's not bad the mouse scroll wheel is really good as well i think the scroll wheel is a bit better than the glory scroll wheel as well the side buttons i think are a little bit nicer to use than the glorious side buttons i feel like this front one is a little bit longer and that makes it a little bit nicer to use and then this is what really seals the deal for me is this paracord this paracord believe it or not is a little bit better than the ascended paracord that glorious has on their mice but you know it's uh it's still not necessarily the greatest and not x from one level but it is better than the ascended paracord on the glorious mice the biggest nail in the coffin why i find that this mouse is a little bit better than the glorious offering is because hyper x uh, they've had this mouse on sale for as low as like 35 dollars which is an incredible deal 35 dollars plus shipping but after shipping it's about i think 40 or 42 dollars shipped to your door with the pulse fire haste if you buy it directly from HyperX, use honey to have it like go through all the codes and discounts and whatnot and it dropped it down to like 35 bucks i hope that it's still running but if it's not and it's back up to its 50 dollars price tag not necessarily bad as i do think that this is still a better option than the model o which is also similarly priced
And then next we have the first mouse offering from Ducky. So this one is a very similar shape to the Razor Viper and Viper Ultimate. And this one I think is either 70 or 80 bucks as well, but it uses these uh, Huanu blue switches has a few holes cut into it and this rubber piece here and there on both sides of the mouse. And the rubber, I will say, is pretty decent. I don't really sweat that much, but I will say that this is not as good of a grip as if it was just plastic. So I do wish that on the next version of the Ducky Feather that they just make this piece entirely plastic instead of the rubber grips. But the mouse clicks, I think, are very good. They actually feel pretty similar to the Viper, believe it or not, but they feel similar, but better. And then the scroll wheel is very good. The side buttons I do think could be improved just a little bit. That's where I think the Pulse Fire Haste does a little bit better than the Ducky Feather and why I put that one just above this one but I will say that I don't really have an issue hitting the side buttons the paracord is probably the biggest weakness on this mouse because this one is just as bad as the Extrify M42 where it's really not that flexible and I would highly recommend paracording this mouse the stock feet are actually not bad and you can see that they give you the uh, massive area if you want to use the bigger mouse feet that are included in the box which I will be using but I'm testing it out with this first before I decide to go ahead and throw a paracord on this mouse uh, once the pair of cores start to come out. But otherwise, there really is no need for software on this mouse. You do have a small RGB zone here, and then you do have uh, your lift off distance controls here and polling rate controls here, as well as a DPI button on the bottom. So I think that for the first entry from Ducky, this is a very solid option to go with the Ducky Feather. Like I said, the only thing you really need to do to it is swap the paracord. But other than that, this is a pretty stellar option from Ducky, especially if you like the Razer Viper shape, but maybe you don't trust necessarily the Razer's quality control. I think that they do a pretty good job. But if you like Ducky better as a brand and you want to go ahead and try out one of these, then I highly recommend it. It is a great option. Maybe a better way of saying this is that I would actually pick the Ducky Feather over the standard version of the Razer Viper. That's what I meant to say. And so that will complete the top 10 portion of this video. We do have two more categories left over that I do wanna go over with you guys real quick, but the first category that we're gonna go through is gonna be the biggest disappointment of the year, which is gonna be the Glorious Model D Minus. And the reason why I give it to this one there's a couple so number one the shape really does not work that well for me it feels like at the front it flares out just a little bit too much where my ring finger i feel like it slips a little bit when i'm using the mouse and it just doesn't give me confidence when i'm playing using this mouse also at the uh, the right side of the mouse i feel like this shape it slants over just a little bit too much where like it feels big on the left side and it's not necessarily the most comfortable and i can't really get a solid grip on it it just feels very weird to use it doesn't inspire confidence um, when using this mouse so i think it's a good mouse overall like you know clicks feel buttons all that stuff the center is decent as well i have no issues with that the mouse feet are you know glorious mouse feet they're okay the dimensions of the mouse really just don't work for me i feel like the side buttons the front button should be up just a little bit more and we should bring this back button a little bit up more as well because i feel like i have a hard time reaching back so far to hit the back side button so that's a big miss for me is just the usability of the model d and model d minus both is just not that great and I don't think that they're the best entries from Glorious and I definitely prefer the Model O series more to the Model D series.
And then last but not least, we gotta include some budget offerings for you guys as well. So here we have the Razer Viper Mini and we have the Logitech G203. Now between the two, I'm definitely gonna go ahead and pick the Viper Mini over the G203 because the Viper Mini is just a much better mouse and for not that much more money but it, the reason why i include the g203 is because it's one of those scenarios where it's like you either spend half or you spend double let's say that you're someone that's just getting into pc gaming i would heavily consider these two options especially if you're a kid you have a smaller hand size these two will probably work pretty well for you so the viper mini same optical clicks as the other razor mice the side buttons i think are very good as well decently sized and you do have the addition of a dpi button at the top of the mouse which is nice because it's easily accessible and if you're new to pc gaming you still might be experimenting with a few different dpi options if not personally i always remap my dpi button to be a media play pause button that's just what i like to do personally but just giving you guys some ideas scroll wheel is decent the mouse skates and the paracord i think are the two biggest downfalls of the viper mini but as a budget option you know it still leaves you room in the budget if you're going to make this your main mouse to go ahead and upgrade those mouse feet and upgrade your paracord this one i got a paracord from paracord mouse and some tiger arc 2 mouse feet and it's vastly improved in my opinion Let's say that you don't want to spend, you know, 30 or $40 for this great option being the Viper Mini and you want to spend half of that. Well, the best mouse in that price range of about 15 bucks is going to be the Logitech G203. So what I like about this mouse is just that it shares the same shape as the G Pro and the G305. But, you know, obviously you got this rubber cable, not a paracord. And then you do have, you know, just regular Teflon feet and they're okay. They're not that bad, but I definitely hope that you have a good mouse pad that isn't going to add any additional drag to, you know, the drag that you're already going to get from having the subpar mouse feet. But honestly speaking, the biggest reason why I would consider this mouse for that $15 price tag is, you know, you get solid build quality from Logitech. They never have bad build quality on their mice, in my opinion. Decent mouse clicks as well. Super sharp and tactile. Decent side buttons. A great shape. I kid you not, the shape makes this mouse. So being Logitech, you got a solid sensor. I had no issues like just using it and just general performance, you know, gaming and regular computer use download the software, swap the DPI and whatnot. And overall, you're just gonna have a really good experience using this as an entry level mouse offering. But um, is it gonna be worth it to modify this mouse and add a pair of cores, swap the mouse feed and all that stuff? Personally, I'm gonna say no with this mouse being so cheap. I would say the logical upgrades from this mouse are gonna be either you go up to a G305 to get the wireless or you go up to something like a Viper Mini if you want something that's similarly sized and you're planning on modifying it. Or Pulse Fire Haze, any of the mice that were you know previously mentioned on this list is something that you would upgrade to from a G203. This is just something to get you started or the other mice are gonna get you a lot closer to your end game. Oh man, this is gonna be a long video. I can't believe I told myself I wanted to make this video less than 10 minutes. I don't know how long it's gonna be after I edit it. I'm guessing this video ended up being around like 14, 15 ish minutes. I'm not too sure, but uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to drop a like and subscribe. If you are new to the channel, let me know, um, you know, anything else that you guys are interested in, in terms of mice. Again, like I said, I didn't include the G Pro Wireless Super Light because I simply don't have one just yet. So I haven't been able to test it yet. I hope that mine ships soon, hopefully before the end of December, because I would like to review it this year. But if not, whenever I get it, you already know I'm going to drop a review on it and I'm highly anticipating checking out that mouse because it's basically exactly what I asked for from Logitech. So like I give it a ghost position 
in that top wireless uh, top three mice for sure. But uh, we'll see. We'll see once I get my hands on it. Thank you guys again for watching this video. Don't forget to drop a like and subscribe if you are new to the channel as well. Don't forget to join the Discord channel as well as we are probably going to be doing one or two quick 24-hour giveaways before the end of the year. And uh, yeah, pretty much all I have to say. Thank you guys for watching. I will see you in the next video.